Welcome to Ignani.com. See Programming, Chapter 6, Using Constants and Variables. Before proceeding, I would like to mention that due to request from various members, we will be using Code Blocks, a free, open source, cross platform IDE. You can download it from www.codeblocks.org. Previous chapter covered constants and variables, but that was all theory. In this chapter let us put it to use and see them in action. Let me start with a demo on using constants in C. This sample is named 006 underscore 01.c, and you can download it from our site www.ignani.com. Let us start by printing an integer constant using the printf statement. To execute, click build and run. As you can see, the value 234 is printed on the console. Let me change the value of the integer constant from 234 to 234.55 which actually breaks the rules that I mentioned in the previous chapter on constructing an integer constant. If you execute the code now, you will see a number other than what we expected. Though, we will be covering the printf statement later on in this course, for now, I would want to highlight one thing in the printf statement, and that is percent %d. Percent %d is a format specifier in C, which is used to print an integer. But, while the format specifier is of integer type, the constant contains a decimal value, which breaks the integer constant rule. If I have to fix the error, then I will have to either change the constant value to an integer, or change the format specifier to percent %f asking it to print a real number. Let me add another printf statement with a percent %f format specifier. Notice that by changing the format specifier to %f, it's printing the real number on the screen. But the first statement is still printing it wrong. Once both the statements are fixed, you can see it printing the correct numbers. The real constant that we printed is in fractional form. Let me show you an example of the exponential form, and also of a character constant. The format specifier for a character constant is %c, but I will use %s, which is a string format specifier to display a string instead of a single character. A string is nothing but an array of characters. Let us now try using the hash define function to name these constants, and also see why it's useful if we name them. The hash define directive creates symbolic constants, where constants are represented as symbols. The hash define directive format is hash define, followed by identifier, and a replacement text. When this line appears in a file, all subsequent occurrences of the identifier that do not appear in string literals will be replaced by replacement text automatically before the program is compiled. Let me show you with an example. Hash define, I, 123. When we compile the program, before the compile process, the C preprocessor looks for all preprocessor directives. When it finds the hash define directive, it replaces all subsequent occurrences of the symbolic constant I, with the numeric constant 123. I'm going to define a few more of them. Notice the second hash define statement, where I have defined a real constant in fractional form, with the name as pi. The value for the pi is wrong. It should have been 3.15159926. You will know why it's defined with a wrong value in a few moments. The next hash define is a real constant in exponential form. And the last one is of type string. Now that we have defined symbolic constants, using it is just the same as we use a constant, except that instead of the value, we use the identifier. Notice these printf statements. They are exactly same as the previous ones, 
except that we have replaced the constant value with the identifier. Let me execute it. You can see that in all the places where we have used the constant name, its corresponding value is printed. We can use these symbolic constants as many times as we want it. Check out this modified statement. The constant pi is used in multiple places. Execute it, and you can see that the value is replaced in both the places. Remember the error in the value of pi? If you were using the constants directly, you had to correct it in all the places. But since we are using a symbolic constant, all that is required is to make the correction at one place, and that's enough. Another method to name a constant is by using the const qualifier. The const qualifier enables you to inform the compiler that the value of a particular variable should not be modified. The format to name a constant with const qualifier is const data type name equals constant. Let me show you with an example of a character constant. Const char x equals a. By declaring char x as const, we are declaring that the source string should not change. Thus the const qualifier ensures that your program does not inadvertently alter a variable that you intended to be a constant. It also reminds anybody reading the program listing that the variable is not intended to change. Accessing the constant is same as we did earlier. Now since char x is a character constant, we use the percent %c format specifier, which prints the word a on the console. Note that in the previous chapter, I had mentioned that a character constant should be enclosed within single inverted commas, and they should always point to left. When you type, the editors or IDEs handle the quotes properly. But if you happen to copy the code from any other source, make sure they are not pointing in different directions. Check out this example. When I copy the value, notice the quotes, they both point in different directions. If I try to build and execute the code, it throws up an error. Notice the error messages. Let me fix the quotes and execute it again. Now it builds without any error. Let me now start with a demo on using variables. A variable is a location in memory where a value can be stored for use by a program. Variables are classified in the same way as named constants, except that their values can change during program execution. You are required to inform the C compiler about the variables before you use them. You can inform by providing the variable details before using in your code, which includes the variable data type and its name. This process is known as declaring a variable. Let me show you how to declare a variable and how to use it by creating a small program to calculate simple interest. The formula for calculating a simple interest is simple interest equals principal amount multiplied by number of years multiplied by rate of interest divided by 100. So we need four variables. You can declare a single or multiple variables of the same type in a single statement. The format to declare a variable is data type followed by variable name. This sample is named 006 underscore 02.c, and you can download it from our site www.ignani.com. The first two statements in this code declares two integer variables, named principal amount and number of years. The third statement declares two floating point variables named rate of interest and simple interest. Notice how two variables are declared in one statement. Make sure that the variable names that you provide follow the rules that we mentioned in the previous chapter. For portability purpose, define variable names with 31 or fewer characters. This helps ensure portability and can avoid some subtle programming errors that may arise. As a good programming practice, 
give a meaningful name to the variables which will help make a program self-documenting. Multiple word variable names can help make a program more readable, but avoid running the separate words together. Rather, separate the words with underscores as in simple underscore interest, or, if you do not wish to have underscores, then begin each word after the first with a capital letter as in simple interest. The latter style is commonly used. Also let the variable name start with a lowercase letter. With these tips in mind if you look at the variable names, try figuring out, which one is not defined as per the programming practices that I mentioned till now. We have declared four variables, but the question that arises is, why should I declare a variable? Declaring a variable tells the compiler a lot of things. First it tells the compiler that these names are variable names, since you saw earlier that we can even give names to constants. So when a compiler sees the variable simple interest in the program, it knows that it's a variable. Secondly, compiler can identify the simple interest variable as floating point variable, which means the compiler will know what type of value can be stored, and how much memory space has to be set aside for the variable. When we declare a variable, it's not safe to assume that the newly assigned memory space is empty. It's possible that the memory location contains previously used data. To prevent unwanted data from appearing in your newly created variables, it's better to assign some value to them. This process of assigning a value after declaration and before reading them, is known as initialization. Usually, the variables are initialized with values that does not add any value. Numeric variables are initialized with zero, and character variables are assigned with backslash zero, which is known as the null character. Null data type is commonly used to initialize memory locations in programming languages. Null characters are unknown data types stored in memory location. However, it's not correct to think of null as empty, or, void. Instead you can consider it as undefined. So let us store some data into these variables. We can store data either directly or indirectly. The syntax to assign data to a variable is variable name equals data. Let us assign 1000 to the variable principal amount. When assigning data to variables such as variable initialization or as in these statements, the equal sign is not used in a comparative sense. In other words, it does not mean principal amount is equal to 1000. Rather, it says variable principal amount is taking the value of 1000. When initializing a variable, or assigning data to a variable, the equal sign is referred to as an assignment operator and not a comparison operator. You can also initialize the variables while declaring them as int number of years equals 5. This statement achieves the same job, as these two lines of code gets done. In principal amount, principal amount equals 1000. Notice these three statements. Principal amount, number of years, and rate of interest are assigned 1000, 5, and 3.5 respectively. While this assignment is what we call direct assignment, where we directly store the data into a variable. There is another approach as well, wherein we will not store the data directly, but we will store the result of a calculation into a variable as in this code. Unlike the statement where we assigned 1000 to the variable principal amount, we do not know the actual data that gets assigned. Printing variable contents in order to print variable contents, we just need to follow the same steps as we did for printing named constants. We use the printf with format specifiers, as in these two lines of code. Let me execute it to show the result. 
if required we can also mix constants and variables in the same statement as in this line of code. Notice that it has a string constant, followed by a floating point variable, and a named constant of type integer. You will be using a lot of variables and constants in almost all the programs you write, be it in any language. In the next chapter, I will show how to receive inputs in C. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Post all your questions at our site. We will be happy to help you. We want your learning process to be as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.